Hi, this is Gary Yelton with Keyboard Magazine. I'm here with Harold Budd, who is performing tonight at Moogfest. Uh, Harold, how do you like Asheville so far? Love it. You haven't seen a whole lot of it. No, I've only seen the immediate hood, but it's, it's wonderful. Uh, what are you going to be performing tonight? I am going to be performing with the Keith Lowe, bass player, good friend, a smart guy, and we are, we threw a program together, uh, we threw together a program this morning, and um, I imagine that's what we're going, going to do. So it's improvisational? Yes. Yes. And have you played uh, with him very much in the past? Um, third time in about three years. But the last time was uh, just springtime in San Francisco. So we're, we're still on the same page. And, okay. Yeah. Now, you haven't been performing a lot in the United States the last few years. No, I haven't. I have a difficult time performing in, in America. I, I prefer travel in, in, in foreign places, to be absolutely frank with you. Well, where, have you where have you played and where do you like to play? Well, I've played almost in, in all, of, uh, West, all of Western Europe. Mm -hmm. I turned down a job in Eastern Europe because it just didn't sound like a place I wanted to see. Okay. I mean, it, very snotty of me, but that's the way it goes. And I, uh, I performed in uh, Japan, Hong Kong, and uh, but never Australia, for example. It's another place I didn't really want to see. I have, I, I have no idea. Probably because when, when I got there, that's where you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's, even though it's a vast amount of land, it's, it's confining. Now, I understand you lived in uh, London for a while. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah? Yes, I did. And I, uh, that was the, um, it's still my favorite city in the world. I, 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 I am sorry that I'm not there anymore. Ah. Is that when you uh, played with Brian Eno? Oh no, I lived in California when, when uh, we, we put that together. What can you tell us about that experience? Well, Brian was the first one who brought me to uh, London, so that was the first time I saw London. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, um, let's see, is this the same album? I'm not sure. No, that was 1976. Brian uh, produced the... Uh, Plateaus of Plateaus Mirror. Mirror. Yes. Subsequently, I came back, and um, what was the going back quite a few years here? Mm -hmm. Gary, I understand. Me. It was. Um, oh yes, yes, yes. I I, I did. Um, I recorded Lovely Thunder mm -hmm. here in in uh, here in, in in Los Angeles. A classic album. At, at, at uh, uh, in, little, in the little Tokyo section, there. and I, I came over to, uh, and then at the same time I recorded with the Cocteau Brothers. Yes, and that was in London. Okay. And when I came over to uh, publicize those two albums in London, I began to seriously look around. For, the neighborhood. I see. And learning, learning how to get around and the, uh, the style of, of, of the player. Knowing full well that uh, I probably would do nothing about it, but nonsense. Six months later, I, I had moved to London forever. Uh huh. Right? Forever. Absolutely. <laughs> now, when you did record with Brian, yes. did uh, did you learn much from him about recording? Did he I, learn much from you? I, I I can't speak to the latter part, but I owe Brian everything. I mean, he's uh, yes, I, I learned I, I learned more than I could possibly. Understand. Well, he certainly helped bring you to the world's attention. Yes, he did. 
certainly responsible for that. I'm fully aware of that. I was, um, at the time, I don't want to get too, too deep into it, but I was teaching at California Institute of the Arts. And that was a place um, of, full of avant-garde musicians and artists and things like that, of a type that I found myself completely rebelling against. And I knew I didn't belong there. I knew I didn't belong there, that, that I had no business there. Mm -hmm. Even though I was kind of a well-known member of the California Vanguard and yes. all of that nonsense. It was, it was just limited to that. And I, uh, in fact, both Brian and Marion Brown told me that I had no business being a teacher. And I, I, I took them up on it. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's when you quit teaching. That's when I quit teaching. Yes. And it's, um, for about a decade, I almost regretted it because it was so difficult. And I had a family and uh, no job. That's a problem. Yeah. Very, very difficult. But Brian assured me that if I moved, if I basically hauled my ass out of America and went to England, that things would be remarkably different. Now I'm damned if he wasn't absolutely correct. I began making a living within a month. As a composer? Yeah. That's awesome. Yes, it is. Yeah. I, but funny thing, I don't mean honk my own horn, but I knew it. I just couldn't, um, I couldn't do it in America. Yeah. It was just impossible for me. And I, I had to expatriate myself from uh, I see. what I thought was this really glum society. And now you're back in California. Yeah, yeah. Having established your reputation. And every, every, the, the world is completely different now. Well, we really look forward to seeing your performance tonight. Oh, very and, nice. and thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. I couldn't be happier. Thanks so much. Excellent. So. Take care.